Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to show you how to use a really useful utility called Berryboot to install multiple operating systems on the SD card in a Raspberry Pi, and indeed how also to install the operating system for a Raspberry Pi on other media such as a USB drive. Yes, this sounds very useful, doesn't it? So let's get on with investigating Berryboot. To get Berryboot, you just need to go to the web and go to a berryboot.com, which will divert you to this longer address, berryterminal.com, docuphp, berryboot. And I will, of course, put the link in the video description. On this page, if you just scroll down a bit, you will see there are two versions of Berryboot for the Pi, one for the original Pi and the Pi Zero, and one for the Pi 2 and Pi 3, and I want the second of those, so I'll click on that. And in a couple of seconds, we arrive in the uh, file dialog, where it's going to save the file to where I've already defaulted it to, which is download and bury boot on my netbook here. So I'll save that. Shouldn't take too long. It's what, about a 30, 33, 34 megabyte file. Almost downloaded there. And there we are, all sorted out. So if we now uh, minimize that, you'll see I've already got that folder open. We just need to extract these files. So I'll double click that and we'll go to uh, extract all files. We'll stick it onto the uh, machine here initially. Shouldn't take it too long, but you never know. And there we are, the files are all extracted, all sitting waiting to be put on our SD card. So we'll keep that open, but we'll close down other stuff. Now I need an SD card here, I'm going to use this uh, SanDisk Ultra 16 gigabyte card. You could use a smaller card, but of course you'll be using a fairly big card probably if you want to move multiple operating systems from the card. That's the whole point of doing this. So I'll put this card into my Alexa USB card reader and I'll insert this into a netbook here. There we are. And it'll now appear hopefully in, in my computer. It has. This is a blank card, and you must make sure the card is formatted to be um, FAT32. This is removable disk E here. I must be careful, there's another uh, card in this as well, but that is definitely the one I want. I'll right click that, and we'll do a format, just to be certain. And you can see it's picked as a default to format to FAT32, but I'll just click Start on FAT32, just in case the card isn't at FAT32. And there we are, that's complete. And now I'll now open up the card. There we are, look, lots of lovely space sitting over there. And if we go back to our Berry Boot files, I'll do a Control A, pick them all up, edit and copy, edit and paste. Yes, I could Control C and Control V that, but I thought I'd show you on screen. And it'll copy all the files over, and then we'll all be finished. And there we are. We now have an SD card all ready to be used to run Berry Boot on our Raspberry Pi. So I'll eject the thing and we'll get on with that. Right, I've now put the SD card into my Raspberry Pi 2, uh, which we're going to boot up and hopefully use it to install multiple operating systems. And here it is booting in, and there we are. We've arrived in Berryboot. That was nice and quick. It's a very straightforward system to use here. You can see there's a few questions to answer on the screen. Can we see green borders for uh, overscan? And uh, yes, I can, so I'll leave that as it is. Um, I'm currently connected here by a wired network, so I can use that to uh, work with this. But if I wasn't, I could click on Wi-Fi, and then I can enter my Wi-Fi credentials. It won't let me do that because there's no Wi-Fi enabled here. I haven't got a dongle plugged into the Pi 2, but you can use, use this by a wired or a Wi-Fi network. So I'll leave that as it is. It says I can test the keyboard, so I will do. I'll go. Uh, Dum, dum, dum. Yes, I can test the keyboard and we'll click OK. We now have to select where we're going to install our operating system. Now, at the moment, I've just got the SD card in the Pi, so we're going to install onto the SD card of the operating system, which is that there. So we'll go OK and we'll go format. It will format it in a second with the appropriate files. And here we are, it's giving us a choice of operating systems. And you see there's a lot of operating systems here. It's basically picked up everything really supported for the Pi, the standard version of Raspbian, which is what I'll pick in a second. 
but we've got Fedora, we've got uh, all sorts of op options down here. We've got, say, Ubuntu Mate. Uh, if you want to install that, we've got a version of Android. We might try that a bit later on. We've also got others, which are things like uh, RetroPie there for gaming, and we've even got some appliance settings as well. But for now, as our first operating system, I'm going to install the standard version of Raspbian. So I'll click OK, and it now needs to download that operating system, which will, of course, take a little bit of time, so we'll nip into high speed. And uh, there we are, the download is now complete. Isn't it amazing how much data we pull off the internet these days? And we can press OK to uh, reboot. And uh, here we are coming up again. The four familiar raspberries. And there we are, we booted to that. And we should from this be able to boot from our boot menu. Obviously only one item, but we will boot um, from that. It'll boot anyway, you can see the counters clicking down. And we're now going into a Raspbian. So this will be a standard first boot into Raspbian coming from our newly installed version on our Berry Boot system. And here we are in Raspbian with the standard Raspberry on the screen. But of course we could do this already. What we want to be able to do is to have multiple operating systems. So I'm now going to close down and we'll add another operating system to our Raspberry Pi. So uh, here we are booting up again, and we should get back to the boot menu, I hope, fairly quickly. Our familiar four raspberries there. And there we are at the boot menu. We could boot here into Raspberry, and we would if I don't do something quickly, but I'm going to click Edit Menu. And I'm going to add another operating system. Now, if you single click the button up here to add operating system, you go straight to the list of, of choices. If you click and hold, you notice you get a chance also to put an operating system on from a USB stick. But I don't currently have that, so I will select the uh, download OS from internet. And I think this time I'll try something a little different. Let's try this uh, experimentalist version of Android KitKat. So I'll select that and OK. And of course we'll have another download to do. And uh, here we are, another download is a almost complete little bit of a smaller download. This one, there we are, finished off. And all we now have to do is once again click on Exit, which will take us out of the menu editor and reboot the machine. And there we are, we've gone through the boot, it is coming back again. We've got the post screen from the Pi in its lovely rainbowy colours. Four raspberries as usual. And there we are, we've now got the boot menu, which has got Android KitKat or Debian. We could this time decide to boot to Android. And I think we will do that, so we'll leave it on that and we'll go boot. And there we are. I'll be intrigued to see this. You might be intrigued as well. Those were little androidy people, weren't they? Wonder how this will come up. Oh, something is definitely happening. We've arrived on a, an Android type of desktop. Oh, this seems to be a little bit unstable. My mouse is leaping all over the place, but uh, something to press OK down there, so I better press OK. And um, there we are. Linaro, it seems to be... Uh, Something is working. Oh look, we've got various uh, choose some apps to add to our hold screen by touching it. There we are, what do we want? We'll have, let's be exciting, let's have the clock. And uh, there we are. Oh look, we've now got an Android desktop with the clock on it. Isn't that amazing? And uh, I think that's all we're going to do here. This is not a video about running this uh, version of Android on the Pi. It's about installing multiple operating systems. So let's go on and try something else. Right, here we are again. I thought we'd start at the menu editor this time. Just to point out a few more things, we've got the choice here in the menu editor of deciding which operating system boots first as a default if you do nothing. And so at the moment that would be Android, it could be Raspberry, we could just press the set as default and it would work. You might also see I've brought up here more options by clicking more options, you'd probably have worked that one out. We have all sorts of things we can do here. We can, for example, clone an operating system. We can back up an operating system. I could say, for example, I want to take a copy of an Android KitKat. I might have altered it a bit and I want to maybe play with it and not risk making disastrous changes. I could hit backup 
And as you can see, we've got options. We can clone the SD card to an uh, external reader. If we had another reader for an SD card, we could put that in, we can make a copy of the system. That's very, very useful. We can export an image of the operating system, either the original or the image with the data that we've changed. So if I selected that, for example, I can just click OK. I've actually put a USB drive into the Pi. As you can see, it's got those other things on it, but that's absolutely fine. We've got our image file here, we just press save, and it would save it to our USB drive. And there we are, it's finished. I thought it had crashed there, but it hasn't. And if we wanted to get that back again, we can simply go back into the backup menu and we could import an image back from a USB stick. So you can move images around between pies and cards and, and media. That's, that's very, very helpful. Do we want to do this? No, 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 no. We are just showing people what would happen. So, there we are, Berry Boot, all sorts of options here. As you can see, you can get into the config files if you need to, the config text file on, on a Pi. So you've got complete control if you want it. If you don't want it, you can use it very much as I've shown you here, just clicking and uh, moving things around, and it's nice and straightforward. So a very good tool in the armory of anybody playing around a lot with different operating systems on a Raspberry Pi. Right. As a final demonstration, as a final trick, I'm now booting up again with a clean copy of Berry Boot, and I've also got connected to the Pi, not just a USB drive, but also this old SSD, which is connected in with a SATA to USB adapter. What I'm going to try and do is to put the operating system files onto the SSD. So here we are in Berry Boot, and as last time, I'll leave all that as it is, and I'll go OK. And I now want to select my destination drive to be, uh, I think it is going to be that one, isn't it? That is my SSD connected. It's not transcend, it's not the internal card, it's not network, must be that one. And so that's, that's fine. It's going to format the drive, which is uh, OK, because it is actually blank. So we'll let that be OK. And now I want to add an operating system, but I actually want to add it using not the systems here, but actually I want to load one in from an image I've already got saved to the uh, USB drive. So what I think I have to do is to go cancel there, and it's going to go OK. And we'll reboot and come back again. And uh, here we are. I'm now going to do add OS, click and hold, copy OS from USB stick. And I think it's SDA1, I'm going to guess it is. And there's the uh, Raspberry and Jesse image which we had previously which I saved to the uh, USB drive before I actually reformatted the card I'm using here. So we'll go open. And uh, there we are, we've got Raspbian on the drive and I think just for good measure we'll add on the Android copy as well. So again I'll go copy from OS USB stick, take that and we've got our Android KitKat there, we'll put that on too. And I think that's all we need. So I'm now going to uh, exit from this to do our final reboot of the video. And here we are coming up for a final time. Now, I should point out that whilst we've got the operating systems installed on the SSD, you still have to boot from an SD card on the Pi. The Pi can't boot from, from USB. It's booting from the SD card with Berry Boot on it, and then it's picked up the menu here from the uh, operating systems we have installed on the SSD. So let's boot Raspbian from the SSD, or at least effectively load Raspbian from the SSD. And here it is, our Raspbian SSD boot. Is it amazingly quicker? Not really, this is a Raspberry Pi 2, and although we've got an SSD connected, it's via a USB 2 interface. But it proves a point. Many people have said to me over the past few years with a Raspberry Pi, could you boot from an external drive? Could you load your operating system from an external drive? You could do. I'm using an SSD here because the Pi could power it. It couldn't power an external two and a half inch drive. You need extra power for that. But anyway, I think that proves something else you can do with Berry Boot, a very uh, impressive system. And we've now got Raspbian loading from an SSD. Berry Boot is one of those great utilities that just works and works very well indeed for its stated purpose. So if you want to have multiple operating systems running from your Raspberry Pi without constantly switching SD cards, 
I'd very much recommend using Veriboot. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.